If you have Judges 15 and 9, hear the beginning of the reading of God's word. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he hath done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into, the hand, into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came into Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him mightily upon, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi, and he was sore athirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. So far, the scriptures, our subject will be derived from the 17th verse. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand. Grab your neighbor by the hand and look them in the eye and repeat the words of our subject. Say, neighbor, don't throw away what God has anointed. Now that you know the text, look at somebody and say with some spiritual enthusiasm and conviction, say, don't throw away what God has anointed. Put those hands together and give God praise. Now, tell them, don't throw away what God has anointed. There is a subtopic, and hopefully we'll get to it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, pick it back up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Our text is filled with contradictions. One I want to reference is this, that God does not cancel his eternal purpose because of personal proclivities. Samson is hurt because his wife has betrayed him and his father-in-law has given her to another man. And I don't want to spend too much time on this tonight, but is there anyone here that has ever been hurt? Y'all can talk back to me. Now, this, this is a big place, so y'all got to holler back, you know. I said, is there anybody here that has ever been hurt? 
God has the uncanny ability of taking personal pain and using it as a lightning rod to motivate you to fight the enemy. Uh, this is the reason ex-convicts are likely to have a heart for prison ministry and ex-drug addicts are passionate about outreach. Men and women that have experienced abuse tend to find themselves in caring ministry because God can take something that hurt you and use you to deliver others. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was so inspired by the late, great Bishop O.T. Jones, Jr. He happened to be one of my friends. I would walk to hear him preach. And he would say things like, Brother Marvin, I'm a holiness preacher. But something he said, he said, I don't ever want you to think what is wrong for someone else to do is right for you to do. I'm, I'm going to preach in a moment. And yet God's purpose is not annulled because of your personal problems. Let's look at the text. The Philistines came against Judah. I, don't, I only have about three points. The Philistines came against Judah in Lehi. And Lehi, by definition, means chin or jawbone. We'll come back to that a little later. The men of Judah ask the Philistines, why are you come against us? We haven't bothered you. Judah is saying, we recognize that you have control over us and we have made no effort to change those conditions. The representatives of the Philistine army replied and said, we know it's not you that we're after, but that troublemaker Samson. All right, here's point number one. Everybody say point number one. This is point number one. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. be wary of saints that settle. Be wary of saints that settle. Believers who expect more, trust more, see more, pray more, study more, labor more, give more, and even love more are always held in suspicion of those who are content with less. I don't mean godliness with uh, contentment, which is great gain, but those rather who are satisfied with what the devil, people, or society says is enough for them. Judah, 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 uh, uh, you got to be wary of those that only praise in a place that their enemy has designed for them to praise in. I guess this would be point number 1A. Your oppressor will set limitations for you. The world, spiritual wickednesses in high places, political parties and their cooperatives don't mind you shouting and dancing and even prophesying in a prescribed area. It is when you move into territories that they said you should not be in. When you move into territories outside of those designated places that you become a threat. Notice that it was only after Moses told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. It was only after he said that, that he made them make bricks without straw. I submit to you tonight that it is not 
uh, that the Israel did not keep the Sabbath in Goshen, for they did. But when the man of God asked the oppressor to allow them outside of the prescribed designation, that's when Israel turned on your lead, on their leader. You need to understand the devil doesn't mind you shouting, dancing, as long as you do it in the area that he has said you can do it in. It amazes me how people view the church and the church of the 21st century has fallen victim to what the world thinks the church ought to do. You should never look to unregenerated people to find out what God wants you to do. It's never going to happen. When the church stands up and says no to what the world says they ought to be doing, then the world is going to have problems with you. I don't hear nobody talking to me. When they begin to move into areas that they were not supposed to be in, that's when other church folk begin to say, Moses is a troublemaker. I need to talk to somebody here. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, is my anointing making you nervous? When you, when you begin to believe God for things that are outside of the norm, you become a troublemaker to the church. Notice in verse 11. 3,000 men go to the top of the rock Etam. And that word is, is interesting because it is a place of birds of prey. You have to understand, yeah, Mandabai. We will have to understand that when God has an assignment for your life, you're not going to be able to hang with everybody. Edom is an interesting Edom is an interesting place for Samson to resort to because it is a rocky crag, a, a steep, rugged, rough, broken, protruding or projecting part of a rock. And if you are going to be extraordinarily used of God, you must become comfortable with isolation. Everybody wants to be anointed. But nobody wants to be isolated. Ooh, I might as well preach while I'm at it. To understand that God has called you into something that is unusual, you have to find yourself comfortable with being talked about. It is impossible for you to be all that God has called you to be and everybody be in love with you. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, if you're going to do what I tell you to do, you're going to be hated of all men. The church needs to stop trying to be liked and simply love what God has called him to do. And so... 3,000 men go to the top because they are plagued by the enemy. The enemy is so comfortable with the state of Israel until they go to Judah and Judah gets nervous because the enemy is at their door. Watch what happens here. Uh, they go to the top and say, Samson, what have you done to us? Imagine the deliverer is being indicted by those he's trying to deliver. I know I got the right message. It's, it's not... It's not the world that is coming to stop Samson. They first go through the mechanisms of the church because if you can get the church to turn on somebody that God has anointed, then you control the limitations of what the church can do. I'm going to preach in a moment. 
They asked Samson, Sam, what have you done? What have you done? Your anointing is making it difficult for us. Hmm, the way God uses you makes you uncomfortable for us. Uh, we don't like being in bondage, but we've settled for what seems to be our lot. And we've kind of gotten uh, uh, comfortable in being less than what God has called us to be. They don't mind us having church. They don't mind us keeping the Sabbath. They just don't want us acting as if God is greater than their God. They don't want us acting as if God has anointed us outside of our comfort zone. He said, I only did what they did to me. Do I have anybody here tonight that the devil has done some horrific things? To? And I don't know why we feel just because he's the devil, he can get away with stuff. I don't know why we feel just because he's hurt our family that we have to let it go. Somebody ought to draw a line in the sand and tell the devil, not only are you not coming any further, but I'm getting ready to come get that stuff you took. Well, the issue, the issue, the issue is the broken unity of Judah. <sighs> if you understand, uh, they were divided in tribes, and uh, uh, Samson was not from the tribe of Judah. He was from the tribe of Dan. He was a Danite. Uh, but whether Judah or whether Dan, we still in the same family. <laughs> and don't think because you're comfortable in your little shout and dance that the devil is going to let you get through with what you have to do. He's just going to allow you to, to be victorious because you're cute. You better understand that an, that, a, that an assault against one anointed person is assault against all anointed people. I feel like preaching now. Samson says, uh, tell you what, y'all going to bind me up? Go ahead and bind me up. Go ahead. Tie me down. But you got to promise me one thing, that you're not going to kill me. Here's point number two. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, respect the gift. I understand. Most of our problems as it relates to those that are gifted in the ministry is personality driven. We really don't know why we don't like them. They ain't never did nothing to us. We really don't know why. Uh, we, if we don't like the way, I don't know if it's something that they, the, the, what they wear, they dress. I don't know if it's how they preach, whatever it is, we don't know why. But the enemy is successful if he gets you on the side of your enemy against someone that God has anointed. They begin to tie him up. Samson makes them promise that they will not kill him. Tell your neighbor, say, don't kill me. Yeah. You may not like the way I preach or the way I dress or the way I look, but don't, don't kill me. Don't try to kill me. You, ah, I feel like preaching here. I'm, 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 I'm Church of God in Christ. I might as well preach like I know y'all. Look at somebody and say, I ain't after your little title. I'm not, I'm not after your position. Look at somebody and tell them, tell them I'm not after your position. Say, you might not like me, but don't kill me. Don't kill me. We're really on the same team. There are few things as hurtful as being tied up by your own church. Would somebody say amen here? 
I said, there's few things as hurtful as being tied up by your own church. Yet, you must agree that when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, nothing can keep you bound. So my anointed, do I have any anointed brothers and sisters? My anointed brothers and sisters that I hear, don't spend a lot of time politicking. Don't spend a lot of time trying to make folk like you. All you have to do is let the anointing come. Lord, I feel like... Touch somebody and say, stay anointed. Stay, stay anointed. Because it is the presence of God that validates you. I need somebody to give God praise right there. I'm trying to hold myself together. Ah, it's not your eloquence. It's not your degrees. It's not your ability to keep the attention of a crowd. Tell somebody it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. For it is the anointing that destroys you. I said it's anointing that breaks the yoke so don't waste your time just let the anointing validate you ah, bless the name of the Lord I want to make another point here I cannot kill my brother and sister even if they have participated in a scheme to limit my mobility simply because and I guess this would be point number two because look at your neighbor and say neighbor this is 2B this is 2B tell them the anointing doesn't fight the anointing God does not work against himself. Yeah. So I cannot participate in destroying you even if you've tried to destroy me because we're called by his name. Oh, Lord. Uh, Let's move on. Uh, I want you to understand that as he comes down from Edom, and the, the, the cords are tied about him, when the anointing comes, the Bible says that those cords are like flax that is burned. I'm here to encourage somebody, to tell somebody no matter how they may try to tie you up, when the anointing comes, every plot of the enemy, the anointing breaks. And that's the reason they can't keep you down. Because the anointing causes you to rise to a level above your enemy. I'm not here. Do I have any preachers here that agree with me? Look at somebody and say, I'm not here because folk wanted me here. I'm here because they couldn't do anything with the anointing that was on my life. I'm coming on down the hill now. I want to inspire somebody because they may tell you what you can't do. Oh, shut up, But the anointing causes you to go beyond what folk think you are. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, can you believe folk told me I couldn't sing? But I just said I can't sing to you. <laughs> People will tell you what you can't do. I'm not looking for you. I'm not looking for you. I'm, I'm looking for somebody that God sent me to touch. And if you understand that the anointing of God, if it is authentic, it is tangible and transferable. Touch somebody and say, if you act right, I can give you what I got. God told Abraham, I'll bless them. Y'all not going to help me preach here. The 15th verse. 
as he came down, he didn't have an agenda. All he had was the anointing. Mm, and somehow, the anointing overrides the best plan you could ever make. He comes down out of the, the hill and uh, finds a jawbone. Now, I want you to understand that uh, he found a new jawbone of an ass. And I can hear the Holy Ghost saying a new thing. Just touch somebody and say a new thing, a new thing. There is no scriptural reference. There was no precedent set uh, for what Samuel was doing at that moment. But the anointing is making its own way. And the Lord is saying here at the 104th convocation of the churches of God in Christ, I will do. Maybe. I will do a new thing. In other words, God has a fresh revelation that he desires to give. It's no longer church as usual. I'm getting ready to preach in a moment, but I need somebody that's anticipating a new thing, which does not mean you have to be strange and weird and call it a new thing. God is going to take something that you had never imagined you would be able to use before, and he has the omnipotent power to anoint something that folks say is nothing. It is the jawbone of an ass, which gives us to know that the ass has been killed, dead, rotted. He has gone back, but yet there's something that God's going to resurrect. Ah, bless the name of the Lord. He grabs that and begins to kill a thousand Philistines. Then he says, Come to my text. He says, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. This was his song. This was Samson's testimony. Yeah. But then he does something. He casts the jawbone out of his hand and throws it away. I've come to my subject now. The end of the verse says that he renames the place Ramoth Lehi. And it's point number three. This is borrowed from Bishop Tudor Bismarck. I ain't going to do like Pastor James did to uh, Bishop Shedd. I'm going to tell who said this. Uh, he, said, he said, what you conquer, you can name. I'm going to try that again. See, the reason we can't name much because we haven't conquered much. What you conquer, Lord, y'all going to make me work here. I said, what you conquer, your name. Now, Lehi, Lehi meant jawbone, and Ramoth, mean, Ramoth Lehi means the height of the jawbone. So it brings me to the subject because Samson must have felt that he had used the jawbone to its fullest. And who could have argued with him? because he killed a thousand men. But the problem with that is, when we feel that we have used something to its maximum or to its height, then we throw it away. Remind your neighbor of the subject, say, neighbor, don't throw away what God has anointed. He throws away the instrument that has brought him deliverance. I hear you. 
He throws away the article that God has chosen to make him different with. Ah, you remember Moses when he said, Lord, how am I going to do what has not been done for centuries? And God simply asked him, what's that in your hand? Ah, Lord, have mercy. I want you to understand that God is going to give new revelation and new anointing on something very familiar. Mm, lean on somebody and say, don't throw away what God has anointed. Watch the paradox. He throws away what God has anointed and then cries to God for help. We abdicate the very thing that God blessed us with and then ask God to help us. He says, Thou hast given this great deliverance into my hand, of thy, into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. Then the Lord instructs him, go back and pick it up. I came here to talk to my people, to say there has been some things that you have placed in the refuge. Some anointed things that God has given you. That somehow you feel you've reached the apex of using it. And sometimes we allow folk that did not have what we had. And we want to assimilate to where we can be accepted by people that don't have what God has given. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something that uh, don't ever think that the world isn't watching you. And the very thing you're throwing away is the thing they're trying to get. Hmm, it's, it's amazing to me how we want to receive instruction from unregenerated folk. Uh -huh. I feel like preaching now. Preach. Uh, we act as if they have the ability to validate us. We're looking for people that don't know who Jesus is to make us feel as if we have it going on. But I want you to understand that the devil is alive. And if the devil was going to have his way, you never would have run into Jesus. Hold on a minute. I'm trying to get there. Preach. I, 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 I want you to understand that I believe in human intelligence. Yes, yes. I want you to understand that I'm an advocate of education. Yes. I have three schools uh -huh, uh -huh. named the Marvin L. Winers Academy. Yes, yes. I'm not as not big as Bishop Daniels, but I'm on my way. I want you to understand that I believe in education. Yes, yes. But we cannot uh -huh. abdicate the spirit or feel as if our intellect has the ability to justify us. Uh, the Apostle Paul, I was just teaching in our Bible study, the, the Apostle Paul says, for God by wisdom uh, caused the wisdom of the world to be made of none effect. In other words, I can never find out who God is by my intellect. Just the other day in 6 a.m. prayer, the Lord gave me a revelation. And this is what he said, Evangelist Rogers. He said, your mind or your intellect can never do what faith can do. 
Because if you use your intellect, God is limited to your ability to understand him. And I want you to understand that when you're born, you can never recreate brain cells. So what that means is I'm only as smart at my birth as I'm going to be at my death. Because I do not have the ability to recreate brain cells. But faith makes us all common in the things of God. Fame gives us the ability to believe God for the impossible. That's the reason your faith was always precede your understanding. Because when you wait on God and you try to understand God, you'll be all day trying to get what God has for you. But when you use your faith, you understand that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. Somebody shout faith. He said, uh, Samson, pick it up. Pick up what you have thrown away. Because there is a miraculous manifestation that's about to happen in your life. Yes, I said there's a miraculous manifestation that's about to happen in your life. And what you have to learn how to do is not be proud enough. The bishop preached about humility and pride. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't be too proud to go back and pick it up. Right in, right in the jawbone, God is going to have a miracle happen. I feel the anointing now. Look at your name and say, name. Did you hear what the preacher said? Right in the middle of your complaint, if you pick up what God told you to pick up, a manifestation, a miracle is going to happen. God's going to cause water to run out of a jawbone. And there's not going to be a drill or a spigot. You see, the problem with the church is that we become comfortable and we become comfortable living outside of miracles. Hallelujah. I'm a young man, but I remember going into the churches of God in Christ because that's where I was brought up and you knew it was a sanctified church because they did ridiculous things like had wheelchairs on the walls, tumors around the walls, and it was not popular it did not look good but tell somebody there was a testimony on the wall because we believe that God was able to heal all matters of diseases that God had the ability to cast out cancer and raise the dead somebody shout go back and pick it up yes sir whatever God has a Anoint it, and you've thrown it away. You need to go back and get it. Pick up your prayer hour. Pick up your 15 minutes in the morning. If God anointed you to cook chicken, go to picking that back up. He anointed you in the sewing circle. Pick it back up. If he anointed you in neighborhood evangelism, pick it back up. Go to visiting the seniors. Whatever God has anointed you in, tell your neighbor pick it back up pick up your yes lord pick up your waving of the hand pick up your quickening pick up your tongues tell your neighbor pick it back up I know you're sophisticated now you're cute where you can't even dance you're so anointed you can't shout but God 
God is getting ready to do something and you need to go back yes sir I come to talk to the church of God in Christ and tell you to go back to what made you great go back to shutting in go back to praying and fasting go back to casting out devils go back to having tarrying services go back to what made you great because there's deliverance in it shake your neighbor's hand and say name I got to go back Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We've got to go back to believing in one another. Hug somebody real quick and say, Name, I love you. One of the reasons, come at Bishop Sheen, one of the reasons the church of God in Christ grew at an alarming rate in its first years is because of the unchallenged authority of Dad Mason. Whatever he said, you just believed it. If he said, put the whole truth on you and pray, then you believe that sickness was going to come out of your body it might have been ridiculous but you believed it tell your neighbor we gotta pick it back up we gotta believe we gotta pick up his hands we gotta pick up the hands of our leader and believe that God has anointed him to lead us whatever you say we're not going to argue over dinner. We're not going to fight you in the back room or in the boardroom because God is getting ready to use us again. Shout yeah, shout yeah. I'm through, but I believe it. I want you to understand the pastor preach, bishop preach this morning that God hates arrogance. And I don't want you to be an arrogant church, but understand when I tell you that God anointed this August body. He put his seal of approval. And after all you've been through, look at somebody and say, we're still here and we're bigger than ever. We're 104 years old, but God wants to use us like he never used it before. Yes, sir. I want you to understand that the world needs you. I need you. I need an anointed church of God in Christ. I need a devil casting out church of God in Christ. I need a profitable church of God in Christ. I need I need a loving church of God in Christ. I need you. PFI needs you. The PAW needs you. The AOG needs you. The Cool JC needs you. The rest of the alphabet needs you. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm getting ready to pick up what God has anointed. Everybody stand to your feet. I just came to deliver what God has given me. Oh Lord, we need, we need another touch. We need a refreshing. Oh Lord, yeah, yeah. Tell somebody we need to go back and pick it up. There's healing in the pickup. There's water 
Oh, Lord. Oh, it's in the picker. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus, because God didn't throw me away. I feel like preaching personal. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know that's true because God didn't throw me away when I didn't deserve the least of his favor. When I disappointed him with my life and walked away from him, tell your neighbor, God didn't throw me away. And let me tell you why. Because he put his name there and he won't, Lord, have mercy. He won't run away from his name. Lord, have mercy. Tell somebody I may not be a lot of things, but I got the name of the Lord. I belong to him. Yes, sir. Grab your neighbor's hand because I'm getting ready to pray and I want God to send a wave of his anointing in this place. Hey, shut up. I said I want God to send a wave of his anointing in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you tonight. We thank you for your forgiveness and your grace. We thank you because you did not keep us according to what we deserved. And God, your grace and your mercy hasn't been according to our deeds, but it's been according to your loving kindness and the multitude of thy tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for, Lord, when we got tired and felt you had done enough, we walked away from the things that brought us to prominence. We left the things that made us great. Some because people laughed at us and we wanted to be like folk on the other side of the tracks. But God, after being here a while, we recognize that we can't fit in and that we have to be who we are. We're a peculiar people. We're a holy nation. We're a peculiar treasure. We've been called by your name. Fill us. Fill us again. Give us another chance. Let your anointing fall. We'll go back and pick up what we left. We'll go back and pick up what you anointed. Because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you believe it, release that hand and go to giving God praise in him. I need somebody to give them praise. Come on and give them praise. I'm taking my seat to the Baba Yandaba. Bekoto Oranda Baba. Murande Eshalaba. Keto to Baba Baba Sikotanay. Mutanada Moshkadaba. I need somebody to give God praise. Come on, come on. Clap your hands. This ain't entertainment tonight. Clap those hands. There's a breakthrough this. There's a wave of the anointing. Come on, come on, come on. I thank you.
but you should leave holy convocation looking for those things that God anointed in your past. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's still on me. God sent Samuel and anointed David. He said the same thing about David that he said about Samuel. When Samuel anointed him, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. I know he had some mistakes. I know he messed up royally. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's still on me. I'm giving the mic to whoever I got to give the mic to. But I need you to move out of your seat and shake hands with seven people and prophesy about your life. You're going to pick it back up, but tell that neighbor, say, name is still on me. Go to seven people, and when you get through with the seventh person, go to shouting with the voice of triumph. It's still on me. It's still on. Y'all ain't moved to seven people. I need you to move to seven people and shake their hand with prophetic enthusiasm. Tell them it's still on me. He anointed me years ago. Hi, but it's still on me. I need the manifestation of the power of God. Tell your neighbor it's still on me. The healing ministry is still on me. The casting out deliverance ministry is still on me. The gift of tongues is still on me. The interpretation all up in the bleachers. Shake somebody's hand and say it's still on me. He's not through with me yet. It's still on me, mother. These mothers need to recognize. Hi, shanta ba 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 ha. Tell somebody is still on me. I can still pray for the sick and they shall recover. Tell your neighbor is still on me. Yeah, yeah, it's still on me. The gift of tongues and the interpretation. Tell somebody is still on me. And I'm getting ready to go pick it back up. Come on and give God praise. Yeah, yeah, it's still on me. Yeah, his anointing. Yeah, yeah. Change, 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 change. Come on, church, and give God praise. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is in the room. Yeah. Out of the belly, let the anointing flow. Yes, Lord. Every 
everybody. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord, everybody, yeah.